My job is to make complex financial systems simple enough. So the average person can understand it. That is extremely difficult because most people are brainwashed when it comes to money. Go to school, get a job, work hard, pay your taxes, save money, get out of debt, buy a house, and invest in the stock market. Everybody who follows that program has been brainwashed. I would never go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt, buy a house, and invest in the stock market. I do everything exactly opposite. Well, everything is the opposite of what they're teaching you in school. I wouldn't go to school. I would study money. Understand that money is debt. And until you get out of debt, they're telling you to get out of money. And the only way money gets out of debt is via taxes. I use debt as money. And everybody thinks getting in debt is bad. Well, who told you that? I think the stock market is for losers. Why would you put money in the stock market when it's manipulated? That's what I think about. So I'm always watching the manipulation going on behind the scenes. That's what my brain is focusing on all the time. And I don't pay taxes. The question is, how is it I don't pay taxes? I can tell you. That's an important question. I'm constantly thinking about how do I make money? How do I serve more people? How do I create new businesses, make more money and pay less taxes and serve more people? And the person has been told to go to school, get a job and work hard, you're gonna pay taxes. Why? Because you work for money. So the question, well, how does a person not work for money and pay no taxes? You want to be an employee, you choose to be an employee. You want to be an entrepreneur, you choose to be an entrepreneur, but you've got to study. They're two, two, two different people. What you have to study is different. Mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, they're different people. An entrepreneur is extremely different than an employee but it's a different study. The trouble is our school system trains us to be employees. And then they tell you to save money. Why would you save money when they're printing money? Why would you save money when they're printing money? I questioned all that. Why would I save money when they print money? That's what happened in 1971 when President Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. They can print as much as they like. Then they tell you, so that you go to school, you get a job, you become an employee. You pay taxes because you're working for money. Then they tell you to save money. Do you know why they tell you to save money? because the system of banking your, has nothing to do with communism or capitalism. It's the banks run the world. The rich run the world. They don't care if you're communist or capitalist. So when you save, so let's say you save one dollar US or one euro, one yen, the banking system can lend out 10. So the entire system is called the fractional reserve system. The fractional reserve system is also printing money. And then they tell you to save money. So they, they want you to save money so they can lend out your money 10 times. So your dollar became worthless 10 times over. They used to pay you 10% interest on your money. Now it's at best 1%. And they're still lending it out 10 times. So that's why you don't save money is because your money is becoming worth less and less and less and less and less. The banks are getting richer and richer and richer. Then they tax you on that interest you they pay you. If I borrow money, guess what? Do I pay taxes on debt? So when they lend out money, that's how money is created. Money is debt. They hypnotize people into being employees who will work hard, pay taxes, save money, get out of debt, and invest in the stock market. Until you question those sayings, those words, you'll be a poor person. Why is debt tax-free? 
because that's how money is created. And so the banks love it. They love people borrow lots of money. So how do I get rich? I borrow money and I buy assets with it. The poor person borrows money and buys liabilities like purses, cars, houses, and they get poorer and poorer and poorer. So the reason I say only lazy people use their own money is because it takes much more intelligence to raise capital. And so I've never been able, ever since my rich dad, since a little boy, my rich dad forbade me from ever saying, I can't afford it. He says, figure out how you can afford it. How can you do something? Figure out how you can do something. So over my lifetime, most of the projects I, I've started, I've, I've never had any money. I, I like not having money because it forces me to think I get creative, I have to educate myself, I have to talk to rich guys, hey, how'd you do this, how'd you do that, how'd you do that? And what has happened to me, and I just turned 72, I've never needed money. Because if I need money, I figure out how to raise it. So today you guys have crowdfunding and all that, I mean, I don't know what that stuff is. But it's easy to say I can't afford it. All the poor people say I can't afford it. All the poor people say, well, it's tax the rich. All the poor people are saying, well, give me a free education, free food, free schooling, free manicures, free pedicures. There's laziness, my opinion. So, you know, over my lifetime, I've raised hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's because I don't have, I didn't have money as a young person that I learned how to raise capital. And, and, and it's really quite simple. You have to find an asset that's worth more than me. You know, if they can't invest in me because that's called slavery, you know, you know, buy me, you know. So what I do is, you know, I started off, I write about it in fake. I started off looking for this one little piece of real estate. I found an excuse, you know, this one bedroom, one bath condominium on the beach in Maui. And I found an excuse for people to give me the money. All I had to do is assure them I'd pay them back. So my first deal was an infinite return deal. I had no money in the deal because it was 100% debt. It was an $18,000 condo. You can't touch them for that much anymore, but the economy was bad. So I buy this $18,000 condo, the guy wanted 10% down. You know, you don't need higher math. 10% of 18,000 is how much sports fans? $1,800. I could have used my money, I had the money, but that would be too easy. Only lazy people use their own money. And that's what really pissed off a lot of people out there. Because, you calling me lazy? I said, yes, I am. Because you're the same type of person who will say, I can't afford it. I can't do that. That's the problem. It's up here. It's, it's, it's the real estate between this year and that year. I can't do that. Most of my family said, well, you, I can't afford it. My father taught to say that. My mother taught to say that. My rich dad should never say that. Let me ask you this question. You, know, you work for the rich dad company. How much of my money is in this company? Zero. So the biggest mistake, so I was doing very well here. This is 1973. I started buying my first deal. And that was an $18,000 deal. $1,800 down, $25 a month. I was infinite, so I got, and then I, I kept doing that, I had a lot of property, and then I decided I'd go here. So my first business was a nylon and velcro surfer lock business, and um, it didn't sell. So you know, everybody knows what those wallets are today, but back then, this is 1974 or five, yeah, 75, they didn't know what the wallets were. So we were going broke really fast. Mm -hmm. We bought 100,000 of these wallets in Korea. We shipped it to our warehouse in Long Island and we were borrowing money from our investors. So we raised about $600,000 to get this little goofy wallet business up. So I was in, we were in serious trouble. I owed my father about $200,000. My rich dad was laughing at me. We were going broke so quickly because we couldn't move the wallets, 100,000 of them. 
They were sitting in this bonded warehouse on Long Island, and nobody would buy them from us. So then, the good thing about stupidity, there it is, makes you smarter. So I started thinking. We started thinking. So what's wrong? And I said, what was happening in the world at that time? All the baby boomers were fat, so they had to start running. So jogging was coming online. You know, and nobody jogged before because, you know, so these guys are all jogging. And then we're reading the paper. We're sitting in Honolulu going broke fast. And we're reading the paper. This jogger went to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco and was jogging around the park. And what the jogger did was he had no place to put his car key. So what did they do? He puts it on the front tire of his car and goes for a jog around the park. So we're reading this newspaper. And voila, when he comes back to his car, the car wasn't there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so the guy says, they stole my car. Oh, my goodness. And so the question was, on the headline of the newspaper article, what does a jogger do with their key? And so we sat there and said, oh, my God, a problem. A problem. So with that, I designed the shoe pocket. And you can see this picture right here. It's Playboy magazine. I mean, she's Nice looking young model with nothing on but a shoe pocket. <laughs> but anyway, so we were going broke so fast by then, but when that picture hit Playboy, mm -hmm. suddenly we were geniuses. And everybody started throwing their money at us. And all of these products, our wallets were selling, our shoe pockets were selling, investors were happy, and the sales went through the roof.